I had a chance to test the M Suiko 14 250mm f4 to f5.6 lens. So, is this the best travel zoom lens for your Olympus or Panasonic camera? Look at the video and you will find out. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about the 14-150mm f4 to f5.6 lens, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and also about Olympus gear. And I usually post two videos a week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. I came to Copenhagen to test this lens. The Tivoli is right there behind me and there's supposed to be a really really nice Christmas lights all over. It's lit with different kinds of lights and I think I'm gonna test some live comp also with the lens. And what happened actually in Copenhagen was that I messed up something because the audio was corrupted. I don't know what went wrong but the audio was horrible, so I needed to do this again in the studio. But I have some clips from Copenhagen from Tivoli, so don't worry. There will be some pictures and video clips from Copenhagen. And yeah, something that I almost forgot. A disclaimer. This lens is not mine. It was borrowed from Olympus Finland. And I asked to borrow the lens for this video. So they did not ask me to do this video. And nor do they pay me for doing this video. I won't need to do this video because I've never tested that lens before and I had the trip to Copenhagen and Stockholm and I thought it could be a perfect time for testing the lens. And let's start with the specs. And as I said the focal length is 14 to 150 millimeter which is an equivalent of 28 to 300 millimeter uh, angle of view which is from 75 to 8.2 degrees. So you can get a pretty wide look and a pretty narrow look with the same lens. And here you can see the difference. This is wide angle and this is the telephoto end. As you can see quite a big difference. And that's why I made the claim in the beginning that this could be one of the best travel lenses for your micro four thirds camera. And the other specs are length is 83 millimeters, diameter 63.5 and the weight is 285. As a body I had the new EM5 Mark III and with that it works really nice. And the combo weighs only 699 grams and that's a great thing. It's really light and small, easy to carry around. You don't have to have excessive amount of lenses with you. The only thing that you might need on your travels is a fast prime lens. It depends on your style if it's a small telephoto like let's say that from the uh, so-called Trinity or the Holy Trinity lineup of of uh, prime lenses from M Zuiko lineup, the 1.8 series, I mean, 17, 25 or 45 could be one of those lenses with you. And, and as I said, it depends on your way of shooting or your style. I'm glad that this combo is weather sealed and flash proof and freeze proof because as I said in the beginning, the weather is nice, but it's not, it's getting to be a bit cold and that's why having a break and some glue wine with rum. Its closest focusing distance is 0 0.5 meters, so you can get pretty close. It's not a macro lens, but it can give you some really nice close-ups. And the seven blade aperture also gives you pretty nice bokeh if you are into that. But let's look at some images that I took here. Hope you enjoyed the images. Do you have this lens or have you used it? What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments down below. As I said, this lens is very good for travel. But what are the other uh, recommendations that Olympus gives us? Let me check. According to their website, it's also good for portraits, architecture, nature, landscapes and general photography. And I can agree with that because the focal length is from 14 to 150 millimeters. So it is good for 
any general photography, all those things that I said. And I can agree with that because it is a very versatile lens. What about, is this good for video? Because a lot of people do travel photography and then they do also travel videos. They, you know, make short clips of their trips. And uh, I would say that this is very good because of the variety of focal lengths you can get with this lens. But there's only one down downside. If you like to zoom during filming, then the variable uh, f um, aperture is not very good because if you start from the wide angle and go inside or in to a tighter crop, you will darken the image and that's not very good. You because in, in video, it's usually good to have constant uh, exposure. With photography, it's not that bad because it can be corrected. But with video, when you use only one shutter speed, you don't have that much to uh, work with. So it's in that sense. But if you don't do any zooming during your video uh, recording, then it's all right. It's, it's really good because you have the, the, the big range on in focal lengths. And which means that you can have a really wide angle and a really tight, tight crop of the same same subject. And that's really good. That's why I like this lens. And, and speaking of video, let's look at some video clips that I took with this lens in Tivoli. And of course, then you are interested in the image quality. And I would say that this lens is excellent in image quality. And the only thing is that like in most lenses and almost every lens is that stopping down one or two stops will improve the image quality because with the fastest aperture, you can see some softness in the corners. It's not bad, but if you want really, really sharp corners, then you need to stop down a bit, but not too much so that the diffraction doesn't come in. So like 5.6 to f8 is, is totally enough. The price of this lens is around 500 euros last dollars. And that's a very good price for this lens. And you can get it as a kit lens for the OMD EM5 Mark III, at least in, in some parts of the world. And uh, I think that's a pretty good deal because then you have a really versatile combo. And there are some affiliate links in the description of this video if you want to buy this lens or this combo. And what is great about this lens, it comes with the lens hood. Yes, that's a very important thing because lens hoods are actually really important. They protect the front element of the lens. If you hit the lens, you know, you're carrying it around and it, it, it just hits something or you're making images in bright sunlight, then it will block the straight light from the hitting the front element, which could make the image quality worse. But of course, if you want some flares, then it's a different thing. But if you don't want unwanted flares, you want to control the flares also. So using the lens hood is wise. And I'm glad that this lens has it. The zoom ring on this lens is really good and solid. And so is the focusing ring if you want to use it manually, which is of course possible. But then I also recommend you to have focus peaking on and the magnification then it's easier to get pin sharp images with, with manual focusing assist. But it's well made lens. And next you might want to watch these videos. It's a playlist of Mzuiko lenses that I have tested. There's lots and lots of tests in, on different lenses. But hey, 
Thanks for watching and bye for now.